welcome to Half Face Outdoors and Homestead, guys. We got a burn day today, uh, so we can start getting the limbs and everything cleared out of the house site so that we have less flying hazards when I start cutting trees down. Um, so, I just got the four wheeler unloaded. Let's go back and grab the trailer, get the fire going, and we'll come up here and get the rest of the tools that we need for the day. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, get doing, first thing we're gonna do today is get this fire going and the air is damp out here everything is wet so this is going to be interesting today and we're going to do it right here in the middle of the turnaround because it's the biggest clear spot that we have so far kind of trying to rush to get this going because sarah's supposed to be out here any minute and after she gets here, I gotta take Stunt to the vet because, you know, he's a pretty old dog now, so he's got to get his checkup and he's been having some health issues. Um, I think he broke a tooth and he's got some swelling going on in his face. So we need to go get him taken care of. Um, and then she's gonna manage the fire and whoever is out here helping her until I get back and then teamwork because that's what makes the dream work it's not supposed to be too cold like 40 is our high today I am gonna cheat and once I get this going we're gonna go get some of that split firewood so that um, this gets a nice bed of dry coals to burn from instead of us just trying to stack on a bunch of wet stuff that's laying on the ground. Go back, I had a buddy make me a custom knife. It's come from my buddy Jay and the Sticks. Um, <laughs> I've used it a lot, like making stakes and things like that to hold tarps down out here. And I had to make a fuel gauge for my tractor, which was just a dipstick. So let's, uh, here Jay, I know you're gonna be watching. So let's see if we can, Man, this thing is like butter. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, Jay. Look at it. This is, man, you did an amazing job on this thing. I love this knife, guys. Amazing knife, man. High carbon steel, walnut grips. He's got the orange liners in there. I love it. done messing around Well, all right, so let's go ahead and we are going to take a look at the basic land clearing tools that th these are the tools that we make sure we've got in the vehicle every time we come out and we bring them back to the house site with us. Um, it, this is basically everything anyways. There's a few things left out because we didn't really have a full blown day today. We just kind of had a brush burning day. Um, but no matter what, these are at least representative of what we bring out every day. Um, so let's get started. All right, so 
Let's start off with the absolute most important thing, and that'd be these. You gotta have your mitts. Anyways, all right, um, so I did buy a new chainsaw when we decided to go through this because I had a 20 year old Husqvarna 55 Rancher that I bought off my grandpa 10 years ago that he had for 20 years before I bought it. Now, I still have it, it still runs like a champ, but we decided that we wanted, I decided I wanted a new saw because this is a huge project. So I went out and I bought my first pro level saw. I got a steel MS261C. Mine's got a 20 inch bar on it. Um, we will do a review more on that here soon. Um, we also picked up a steel MS170 so that I've got a bigger saw for cutting trees down. And you know, as I cut the tree down and it hits the ground, then whoever else is out here with us that has chainsaw experience, they can pick up that smaller saw and they can start limbing the tree out while I take care of the big limbs and the trunk of it. And you know, it, it makes the workflow easier. It's a little bit less work for me to have to do when I've got somebody else who can be out here running a saw and have a saw for them to run. So we will review both of those saws here down the road. Um, but for now, every time we come out, we make sure we have a chainsaw. Aside from that, because it is colder right now, um, one thing that we did make sure we had when it was the warmer months and we were make, always cutting down brush and bushes and thorns and stuff like that was we made sure we had one of the weed eaters. Bring my logging tool because a lot of times it's just me out here or it's just me and Sarah, so I need to make sure that I have a way I can roll logs, I can move logs, and if something happens where one of us gets pinched up, like if a log rolls on my leg or something, it's gonna be a lot easier for Sarah to pull that log off me using this than with her own two hands or the time it takes to hook a chain up to the four-wheeler or the tractor and move the log itself. She can get the behind the log with this thing and pick it right up. This thing is absolutely amazing on rolling logs around. Um, and mine, my stand is detachable. I like having it on there because uh, sometimes I roll the log up onto this thing and let it sit like this and then I can buck the end of the log off and I don't have to worry about my chainsaw blade hitting the dirt. One of the bigger tools, the biggest tools that I keep on me, and I mean you guys saw this earlier in the video, is I always make sure I got some kind of sheath knife my my custom river trader from Jay and the Sticks. This is uh, this really has been the one that I carry the most out here because it's probably the beefiest, thickest blade of anything that I've got so far. Well, I don't know. It's probably right on par with my Holtzman knife, but um, it's just this is this is a beast out here. I, this has been an awesome little tool to have, but I always make sure I have a knife. Um, I do keep a multi tool in the four wheeler. The four wheeler is out here with us every time, no matter what we're doing. It's easier for me to drag things with the four wheeler and a chain than it is for me to drag them with my hands. And when you're doing work like this, you need all the help you can get. I don't care what anybody says. The other tools that we always make sure that we have out here, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pan around for you. And we'll go back through. So this is the shovel that's always in my Envoy. I decided to take it out just to show you guys because I always make sure I have my shovel. I make sure I have a shovel for somebody else to use and another person. And then that one's kind of like a drain and tile shovel. So it's nice to have that out here for when I find these really low wet spots and I need to trench them off. Um, that one is just great for digging out little drainage, drainage trenches. Um, now I have the fuel can sitting there um, as kind of like a representative that, hey, we always have fuel out here. You always need to make sure you have fuel on hand for your four-wheeler, your tractor, your chainsaws, etc. Um, the only thing I don't have sitting here is the chainsaw fuel and bar oil, which is right over there. Oh, and look, another shovel. Carrying on. So we always have our fuel. Um, my little mini sledgehammer, I'm going to have that representative as we always have sledgehammers. I keep three of them out here. I have that one. I have a 10 pounder. And then I have a 
four pound wedge shaped one that's more for or I think it's actually like six pound that's great for breaking up concrete and we've been finding all kind of concrete throughout the side of the driveway um, my CRKT Woods Chogan if you guys watch my channel I I don't go anywhere hardly without that tomahawk um, if I don't have that tomahawk then I have the Hudson Bay axe that we DIY'd in another video we do also make sure that we keep a pair of snips with us. Um, just endless uses for those. I mean, you guys understand that. Then we do have a leaf rake. Right there. It's always nice to have a leaf rake. Um, especially when you're doing big fires, you can rake the area around your fire and keep it nice and safe although today we didn't quite worry about that because the entire ring around this fire is just mud so we also keep two garden and gravel rakes you guys do see the tire the tire is going to be a tire swing for the kids now you guys probably want to know what's in the tote because i would want to know what's in the tote so let's go take a look at what's in the tote so in the tote, I keep a towel because I always need a rag for something on the tractor. I always check the tractor's fluids before we start for the day. It's a 64, it's old, it's leaky. Gotta take care of it. So I keep an extra gallon of hydraulic fluid on hand. I always keep oil on hand for the tractor. generally have spray paint for marking trees or whatever we decide we're going to need spray paint for for the day um, although half the time I don't really use this I just go around and mar the tree that's going to be cut down with my tomahawk because if you're marking a tree it's getting cut down pack of markers for whatever I keep some carb cleaner in here because of the tractor. It, again, it's old. Um, always keep some hand cleaner in here because it's greasy. It's nice to be able to get the grease and the oil off your hands when you're done working on it. Um, dielectric grease. I got a little wire brush in here. I got my feeler gauge for when I need to adjust the points on the tractor. Um, I keep Mason's twine out here because sometimes it's nice to go and run a line and know what we got to do inside of that line. This has been especially helpful doing the driveway because I could run this whole spool out or well this one's still fairly new. I could run a whole spool of line out and keep my driveway fairly straight to that line. Um, aside from that I have a tire repair kit because there's flats happen. I always leave a bottle of water in here just in case I forget to bring water, which is rare, but it does happen. And then I just have some various tools in here. So like I have a hammer, I got another pair of snips, um, I keep a multi tool in here and a pair of ice grips some channel locks, I keep a 6-in-1 screwdriver, um, I got a file in here, it's just some basic hand tools, tractor stuff that I, you know, if I have the tractor back here and I can't necessarily get to the toolbox that, oh well I actually have the toolbox in the trailer. <laughs> I made this little yellow or orange toolbox, okay, and it's, we always make sure we have this toolbox. Um, so, let me go grab the toolbox and we'll talk about it real fast. Okay, here's the toolbox. So, this is like my chainsaw tools, generator tools, and more yard stuff. More yard tool stuff, that's what's labeled on the box. So in here, batteries for a flashlight, my chainsaw scrunches, we keep safety glasses for whoever come out to help that day, my little pen light, 
Um, I keep a, this is actually a Holtzman Gorilla Survival. Um, Maldi, I think he calls it one of the Maldi tools, but it's, it's just a folding razor knife. And then in here I also keep like my chainsaw files. You know, you gotta, it's nice to, I like to stop every couple of trees, unless it's a really hardwood tree like locust. Then I'll stop at the end of the tree and I'll just run my file down my chainsaw teeth. And it, you would not believe how much time that saves you than sharpening every one of your blades at the very end of the day. You just stop every now and again, run your file on your teeth, it takes maybe five, ten minutes, and away you go. Um, my, my mix oil for the chainsaw, chainsaws, and then, you know, I do keep extra blades on hand because I've pinched them in trees. Um, I've had somebody out here helping me that pinched a chainsaw in a tree, and you got to be able to take them out and keep on going. Or, you know, if, if I dirt my blade or if I hit something and it dulls it beyond repair, then I can change my blade out and keep going. I'm not done for the day because I only had the chain on my chainsaw. Um, yellow tape. I keep this out here for marking trees too. Screwdrivers. I keep a couple little of these uh, plier clamps. I'm not exactly sure why I haven't used any of them yet, but I keep... I guess it's the carpenter in me. Make sure you have a clamp. And then I have two pairs of channel locks in here. Uh, an adjustable wrench. And then I keep like spare pins. Spare pins for the tractor. Um, spare spark plugs for I've got plugs for the tractor, I've got plugs for the log splitter, I've got plugs for my generator, all in this box. Um, this, it, Guys, we are, I believe, 15 miles and 20 minutes away from where I live, so when we come out here, we try to make sure that we have what we need to fix what we're using that day, because it's... 20 minutes away so it's a 40 minute round trip drive if we have to go get something um, and with the tractor being as old as it is there's a lot of stuff that I can just rig up on it and we can keep on going for the day as long as I have the basic tools to be able to fix it one of the neighbors so let's uh, get cleaned up oh and I do keep some some tarp stakes in here uh, for if I need to tie this tarp down on the tractor or you know hang a tarp up because it's raining or something like that I did almost forget something I got dotted in the hot with a I got dotted in the hot I got dotted in the face with a hot stick which actually is what reminded me about this one I almost forgot guys I do keep a really this is a more extensive one. It's actually two parts. The other part of it's back here in the four-wheeler. They always stay in the four-wheeler. That's the first aid and trauma kits. Um, and obviously, for what we're doing, that is something very important to have on hand is a first aid and trauma kit. And not just a basic one either. Uh, these have, I have a tourniquet in here. I have a chest seal. Um, compression wraps, uh, the the bleed stop packs, um, and then a, a basic first aid. So don't string me up. I did almost forget it, but it is here. It is always here, and it's always on the four wheeler because the four wheeler is pretty much always where we're at. If it's not in the four wheeler, then it is with somebody. Um, it is always at hand. Well, as you guys can see, our little fire this morning turned into a pretty big fire. We had some issues today. It's been raining on and off, so um, on top of that, Mark came out, and Mark is from the main videos, if you guys have or have not seen those. Um, Mark is not one that really likes to be put on camera, and so when he shows up to help, I generally try to put the cameras away and 
do things with him not in shots and with what we were doing today it was just too much in his face and I respect that so um, I mean all we did today was drag and brush around anyways but that's still a really big help when anybody comes out to do that kind of stuff so we got the big fire going Sarah and Deegan already took off for the day it's going on four o'clock now so uh, yeah we got Let's see here, I'll take you guys around a little bit. So there's this treetop over here um, that I just can't get that thing to disappear, but we did get a pretty big chunk of it gone. There was some more brush along, the, along there that we got that all cleaned up and we got this all cleaned up over here. There was a bunch of brush in there paint you guys around a little bit more this was like the biggest project of today is I wanted to get this big old maple that we had to cut for the driveway needed to be picked up and cleaned up and so yeah that's the majority of what's on there now pretty good day today we got a lot done. I'm, I'm happy with today's progress. So, that's kind of the thing, guys. If you're doing something like this and you're doing it on your own, you know, you're not a, you're not a big company. You're a family or an individual doing it. So, you gotta, you gotta take all your wins, even if they're little ones for the day. Even though this, this was a lot of cleanup done today, and that's, a big thing you know I need to get the stuff on the ground cleaned up so that when we start dropping the trees in the house site um, or even you know we we did decide that there's still um, one two three four five big ones here at the turnaround that we got to finish taken down um, but when those trees start coming down I need it to be as safe as possible for everybody out here with me and that stuff's not flying through the air when they hit the ground and uh, so cleaning up the brush is a really big part of prep work for trees to come down to have more brush to clean up because that's just how it works. So uh, yeah, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Even with the rain coming and going, you know, once the fire took off, it, it's uh, done really well, but it, we did struggle for a while. I wish I could have showed you guys this. We had it stacked like six foot tall um, before it like really uh, caught and took off and lit. It was it was something to see, but you know, Mark here, so that's okay. We'll have more and we'll show you guys more. Maybe we'll have to do one of these big brush burns live. So if that's something you want to start seeing is more live homestead content, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you go down there, subscribe. Guys, for everybody else watching this, if you made it to this point, then hey, you definitely like the video. So make sure you smash that thumbs up, share it out. You never know. Um, I am going to chill in the silence for a little bit and keep an eye on this fire. And here in about an hour, I'm going to take off and head home. So I will see you guys on the next one. And as always, find your way.